What's up you guys, welcome back to Avenged Media. If you're new here, my name is Nick and most of you guys know this car behind me, but if you don't, this is my 2005 Legacy GT Wagon and this is the car that started it all for me. It was my first performance car, I've done a ton of work to it and I absolutely love this thing. It's my baby and you guys seem to really love it as well, so I'm super excited to be getting back to filming some content with the wagon for the first time in the new Avenged Garage. If you missed the episode on the new garage, go back and check those out. You definitely don't want to miss those. But we've got some awesome parts going on the wagon today, some cool JDM parts that I've always wanted for this car that a subscriber actually sent out for me. Now, Jacob, I apologize. I know I told you I'd open these on camera so I could get an actual reaction, but I was too impatient and really wanted to see what they were because I had a sneaking suspicion. And man, I can't thank you enough. This is so awesome. So enough of that. Like I said, I already opened these, so this isn't how they were packed, but Jacob was nice enough to send out a set of JDM power folding mirrors. These are the Rev AC, so it's the pre-facelift, which is what my car is. And I have wanted these for so long. It's one of those like cool gimmicky features that like, it's just a total flex. Like you literally press a button and the mirrors just fold in whenever you want them to. So we've got the mirrors here, both of these guys. And then what's cool as well is he sent out this harness that this guy makes. So, and we got the switch. That's a important part here. So this is gonna go inside the car and you've got your little power folding mirror button right there, total flex. So in addition to that, he sent out the harness that actually is gonna be used to wire this up uh, as well as some harnesses for JDM headlights if I get those in the future that are all pre-made and ready to go. Like I was saying, I have wanted these parts on the car for so long and it's been one of those things that I've just put off because it's not like a necessity. It's not anything that has any sort of functionality other than being really cool. So Jacob, you are the man. I can't thank you enough. Let's go ahead and start getting these installed on the car. So if you're familiar with the Legacy GT or you just have a keen eye, you'll notice that these are actually the same mirror caps and style that's on the car currently. So we can easily swap over this cap here. So because these ones are black, we're gonna swap over the caps from my existing mirrors onto the new ones. But what I'm thinking is we'll get these all installed, make sure everything works, and then we'll swap the cap over while it's on the car. And that way we also have good leverage to get that popped off and I'm not trying to hold the mirror down while I disassemble it. Now it's somewhat of an in-depth process to be able to get the mirrors off in the first place. First, we're gonna need to remove this door card and this little cap up here. That's gonna give us access to the bolts to hold the mirror on. And then as far as the wiring goes, this is where that little switch panel goes. So we're gonna need to take this off to get access behind it. And from what I can tell, we need to actually remove some of the center trim console there as well to get the wiring to run over to the passenger side. So I'm gonna start doing a full disassembly, starting with the door card. It's super easy to take those off, so that's where I'm gonna begin. Hold up, I lied. Before we do anything electrical, we always wanna disconnect the battery, so I'm gonna unplug that, and then we'll take the door panel off. So the other night I took out all of the interior panels that we need to, to run the harness from here across over to the other side, which is gonna be done all under here. So you can see we've got the panel out of there, be able to run it through under the stereo. The glove box and everything is out over there, door panels off over there. So the next step here is getting the mirrors on the car. We've got the JDM power folding ones over here, the harness from Legacy Odds and Ends here. And now what I think I'm gonna do is get these caps off of these ones while they're on the car, kind of going along with the plan I talked about before. Pop these guys off, then we'll put those ones on and worry about getting the caps on the new mirrors once they're actually on the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to get these off. If I'm understanding correctly, this mirror piece just pops out and this is actually clipped in behind here. So we gotta be careful not to break any plastic while we're removing that, but in doing so, it shouldn't be too hard as long as we're a little bit careful.
progress update for you guys. So the JDM mirror is on the car. I've bolted it in in there. We've got the harness running through. There was one casualty to this clip in here. I thought they were metal and this one actually broke, but fortunately there's three other ones and the two end ones are good. So I don't think that I'm gonna notice this too much. And worst case, if I do, I'll find another one, get it painted or something but we need to get this swapped on to that mirror. So we're gonna go through the same process here of heating up the mirror lens and then actually removing this by releasing the clips here. And then we'll get the blue one on and we'll take care of cleaning this all up later, but it'll look great. And I've got some stuff to restore this here. So that's for later. We're gonna get this swapped over and start running the wire inside the car. Got the JDM mirror on with the proper color mirror cap. So this side is all set. I'm gonna do that side for a reel on Instagram. So I will catch up with you guys in a second once we've got both the mirrors on and are gonna run the wiring. So I've got the JDM power pull to mirrors on the car on both sides. Swap the caps. I kept the USDM mirror because I had read somewhere online that those were actually like different for left hand and, and right hand drive. So I put the US ones in there. We should be good to go there. I've got everything laid out here that we need to do to get these things wired up. Got a Phillips screwdriver, a pick for deep ending some wires on harnesses that are in the car, uh, trim panel remover tools if I need them, zip ties, wire cutters and wire strippers. Found this cool tool at Harbor Freight that allows you to feed wire through. Um, so we'll use that kind of going between the door and inside the car when I need to run some of the leads through there. But most importantly, we've got this harness from Legacy Odds and Ends that's gonna make this job so much easier. Otherwise, you'd be making all this yourself or trying to wire it up. I opted for this because wiring definitely isn't my specialty at this point. But what's cool about this is that it gives you this new pin here and I'm trying to remember the numbers, but I think that what's in the car is like an eight pin harness because the JDM has power going to it for folding the mirrors, it becomes a 10 pin. So we're gonna use this and it has two leads that run off of it that are gonna give it power. Otherwise, this is gonna be the exact same as what's in the car. We just need to put the wires into this harness here. So here's our current situation. We've got the harness that I was just showing you guys over here. This is a 10 pin connector, and this is a 10 pin connector coming off the mirror. Now what's in the car, like I was saying, is an eight pin connector. So what we need to do is transfer the wires from this connector here into the new one while running this wire back into the door and through this grommet in here and to the inside of the car. So I think my first order of business is trying to get this wire into here and come out of here. So I'm gonna try to run this wire through the door and into here like I was talking about using this tool here. So it's got the wire held in nicely. I'm gonna try to run it through that grommet. Let's see if I can get better light on it here. Yeah, this guy, this guy here. So you can see it comes down and goes like that. So that angle may be a little tricky for this. I don't know if it has that much give. Fortunately, this thing's flexible, so let's give it a shot. Huge progress update, boys. So we got the plug through here, like I showed you earlier. So this is gonna get hooked up to these wires here. They're in the existing harness. We're gonna deep pin that and put them in here. Now, the big progress is that we actually got this wire into the car. I was able to get it on the inside of this and we'll get those grommets back on there. It was by far the harder way to do it. The instructions even say just to poke a hole here and run it through here with zip ties. So you, you would see basically this sleeving here which really wouldn't look that bad. I just try to get the OEM kind of finish whenever I can. So I did get it through there. Like I said, this, this grommet here is just a plug that goes back in through the door. This one kind of wraps around the, the plastic like housing down here. That one's gonna be a little harder to get back on, but I have faith that we can do it. So this is gonna run across up through here and over like we talked about earlier. But before we do that, I'm gonna get this pin situation all taken care of. That way I know where this harness is gonna be before I start zip tying anything over here. So if you're watching this video as a kind of a tutorial, I'm just gonna mention that the instructions that come with the legacy odds and ends, you can't really see on the screen, but there's a, a nice PDF there that has all of the wiring diagrams for the harnesses here. So as we're deep pinning, we can use this to kind of tell us 
which one goes where, and make sure that we get all of the wires properly transferred from this harness into this one here. So we are back for day three on this project. All of my projects keep turning into multiple day affairs, which makes me extra thankful to have this garage where I can just leave stuff set up. It's been a huge lifesaver and helped me make a lot more content. But let me show you guys what we've got going on here. So where we left off yesterday, I was struggling to get the wires actually out of this plug. And there's no way that I would ever be able to show you this on camera. It's just way too small. But within this pin here that comes out of the door for the factory mirror, there's a little tab on top of the metal clip that you have to actually release. Now they recommend a safety pin to do this. I didn't have a safety pin, I was trying to do it with that pick and that pick even is far too large. So the only thing that I found that has been able to do it is something like this needle here. And I've just been going in there and I, like you can see, I got what, two of them out here? Yeah, there's two of them out and we're gonna swap these over to the new one here. This is a pretty tedious process. So I'm gonna throw you guys on a time-lapse. You can see I got a camera set up there. Hopefully that's a good angle for you. So let's get to it. So with that connector wired up, the next thing we need to do is get the wire that runs into the car, run all the way over there. And so you can see I've been working on it and it's very hard to tell where it is, which is the goal, because I want it to look OEM, but you've got the harness tucked up along this harness that runs here, a couple zip ties in a few places, and then you're seeing the yellow rod that I used to actually run it through to the other side, but we're gonna get one more zip tie on up there and it'll be nice and secured out of the way of anything and looks like it could be OEM here. And I'll show you where it comes out on the other side. And so you can see we got that yellow rod coming through here with the wire on it. So we're gonna be able to get this wire run back down into the fuse box. However, that's gonna be done. We'll address that in a second, but it's coming out right where we want. So I'm gonna get this untaped, pull the rod back through and that wire will all be situated. Boom, got that harness all wired up. There was a couple things like wires in the instructions, which I'll link below that didn't match up for me. But uh, after doing some digging on the forms, I was able to figure out where those two wires went, which were the blue and white and blue and green. They're the seven and eight on here. And I'll make some note of that in the description in case anyone's doing this at home. But we can now get this plugged into here and this side is all wrapped up. Okay, I just had the fight of my life with this thing. So to save you guys a little bit of time if you're doing this at home, this plastic clip that goes into this grommet here that is into the kind of pillar here actually does come unclipped. And because it comes unclipped, like if you're trying to put this grommet back on while it's in there, it's just gonna push back in and it is literally impossible. So pull that out. And even still, it's gonna be quite hard to get into this grommet, but once you get it back in here, we're gonna pop that right back in to the side here and have an OEM finish so you can't even tell we've added this power folding mirror system. Literally clipped right back in. God, I love that. I'll set up on the other side. So we gotta do the same thing that we did on the passenger side, put this harness here. So we're gonna pull all the pins out of this one, swap them into this one, run this wire into the door, through here and behind the fuse box. And then we'll address getting these wires all joined and making the system actually work once we're done. So I've got a set up here. Gonna be shooting some stuff for Instagram. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, Avengers Media on Instagram as well. I actually post a lot more there. So you guys can kind of see some of the behind the scenes stuff that goes on in the garage when I'm not posting videos. But I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on this and hopefully it goes quicker this time having done it on that side already. I can't even begin to tell you how much faster this driver's side went than the passenger side. I literally did it in probably a quarter of the time. I think this took me 30 minutes all said and done. So you can see we've got the wire with the leads coming in through the car. Our grommets all buttoned back up. So once you figure out how to do one side, it does get much easier. So now we need to look at getting these two, which are the ground and the fuse. They're gonna go into the back of the switch here, which goes into this guy here. So the instructions that I'll have linked below show clearly where these go. We're gonna get those installed and then figure out what to do with these leads down here. Man, this has been an adventure. So, we got all of the wires put in here. We had to do ground and then the fuse wire in here like I showed you earlier. And then there was the leads that come off for the blue and the green that we ran from each door to which we wired into this connector. So we've got this here. I'm gonna figure out how to tuck this wire back up in the dash like cleanly once I make sure that this all actually works. So I'm gonna figure out what I need to put together to make this work and check all the features. And then we'll connect the battery and see if this all is working as it should. All right, we've got power on. I hooked the switch up to it and God, if I'm thinking 
this through correctly, these mirrors should fold when I press the button. Okay, so something isn't right. Got nothing. Okay, they move, but they don't fold. Let's make sure this one works. The mirror's moving. That dimmer's working. So something with the power fold setup is not working. I'm gonna come back to this. Let's go, we got them working. Okay, look at this. Oh my God, I'm so happy. So all it was, was this add a fuse down here that we put into, I think it's the door lock fuse. You have to add in the fuse that you take out as well. There was already one in there. I didn't realize you could add a second one. So I added that in and now it all works as it should. Oh my God, look at this. I have wanted this for so long. Oh my God, this is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna get everything buttoned up and then we'll get some more shots of this. So we've got all the wiring tucked away and zip tied, but I pretty much ran it up back here and tied it to existing wires so you can't even tell it's there. This is for the access port that's just hanging down right now, but that won't be there. Um, you can't even see it. You can see they're zip tied to the harness in there. So I think I did a really good job of making it look, you know, OEM-ish to the best of my ability. So now we just gotta go ahead and put all of the trim back in the car, get all of that situated and get the door and get the door cards on. It is another late night here in the garage, but I'm trying as hard as I can to get content out to you guys. We're, we've got a bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes that you guys will get to see very soon, and I will be on top of weekly video content like I've been planning from the beginning. But the Legacy has power folding mirrors. Jacob, huge shout out to you once again. I'm super excited about this modification. I wish I had had the camera rolling when I figured out that it was the fuse that was preventing it from working, because I literally freaked out. Like, I was fully stoked. So I'm so glad to have these on the car and I'm super glad how they turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Get ready for more Legacy GT content. Get ready for a new car here on the channel soon. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button, throw this video a like, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. But until next week, peace out and I'll see you soon.